Hello tennis fanatics, this is Jeremy Malfay with Fundamental Tennis. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the preparation or the load and coil for your forehand ground stroke, specifically when you're receiving a high ball, probably when you're inside the baseline. So the ball is slow and high. It's sitting there for you to crush it and end the point. What are the key checkpoints you need with your body's position, with your technique, to ensure that you maximize power and control. So how should your body look when you're done with the coil where you're loading your body? How should everything look? So the first key checkpoint is we want the feet to be in a semi-open stance. This stance is the preferred stance from all top level players that I have seen. So when the ball is high and short, you set up the point, you're on offense, the ball should not come back. Here are the checkpoints you need with your body's position. Now, the first again is you need to be in a semi-open stance. This means that your feet are at a 30 to 45 degree angle in comparison to the baseline. So if you look at my feet here, and let's use this baseline here as a visual, my left foot is in front of the baseline in the blue, and my right foot here is behind the baseline in the green. So that should give you a good idea of the angle of my feet, or I should say the difference between my right foot and my left foot. Another way of saying it is my non-dominant foot should be closer to the net than my dominant foot. So we've got our feet set in a semi-open stance. We also want to have the feet more than shoulder width apart. And we also want the dominant foot here, so your outside leg, you see my right foot is not quite, look at my right foot here, it's not quite parallel to the baseline. It's a little bit short of parallel to the baseline. So we don't want the foot completely parallel to the baseline when loading that right leg as a righty, but we want it close to parallel to the baseline as you can see here. Now you can see that I have at least about three quarters of my weight on my right leg. You can tell because the heel of my left foot is off of the ground. So I feel like there's almost no weight on my left leg here. Notice how my left foot is always at least a couple inches closer to the net than my right foot. So that shows that I am doing the semi-open stance. Now the reason the pros don't do full open stance in which the feet, for example, would both be on the baseline at the same depth as each other, the reason pros don't do the full open stance is because that will cause them to often open their left side of their body too early. We're going to talk about that more in a bit. Also the problem with doing fully open stance is the player will then not be able to turn their body as much as if they were to do semi-open stance. Now the reason the pros don't do a neutral or square stance on a high short ball is because they wouldn't be able to uncoil their body as much uh, it's more awkward to rotate the hips if you are in a square stance on a high contact shot. Now, another reason they don't do uh, a neutral stance or square stance on a high short ball is because if they do a square stance on a high short ball, they will not be able to get as much of a separation angle, which we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, we'll talk more about in a second, in which the shoulders turn more so than the hips. Now a very common problem I see is that players point their right toes very much towards the net or towards the opponent when they are loading. Now if the toes of your feet are pointing forward, then you're simply not going to be able to turn your hips and shoulders near as much because you need the foot to pivot. In other words, you need that hip to rotate. You need that hip to open up so that you can rotate and create that coil that you need. So we do not want the toes pointing towards the net or towards the opponent when we are loading because again, that won't allow you to turn your body enough. Now it's important that you have a good knee bend. We want the legs to be down enough so that you are about five to 10 inches below your standing height. Now, another key checkpoint is the shoulders need to be turned more than the hips. So you can see my hips are at about a 45 degree angle to the net, or probably turned a bit more than that. But my shoulders are 
even further than perpendicular in comparison to the net, if possible. So I've got my shoulders turned more than the hips. That is a big power source. That's called a separation angle. The shoulders are even further turned than perpendicular to the net. And again, the shoulders are turned more than the hips. Now, when it comes to your non-dominant arm, this is very, very key. We want the left arm to be straight or close to straight, and the left arm should be parallel to the baseline. What this is gonna do is, it's going to allow you to get a full coil or a, a full turn. It's also gonna help you to track the ball, specifically uh, spatial awareness. A lot of you get too close to the ball, so getting this left hand extended can really help with that. Also, doing this uh, left arm heat check point here, again, straight or close to straight and parallel to the net by the time the ball is bouncing on your side, by the way. This left arm is also key because it's gonna help you keep your body in sync, specifically prevent from your, your non-dominant side of your body. So me, I'm a right hand or left side of my body. It'll prevent me from opening up too early with the left side of my body, which if I open up too early with the left side, that's often going to cause a loss of power, certainly a loss of control, and you're much more likely to hit the ball off the frame of your racket. So again, this left arm is good for spatial awareness. It helps balance. It helps tracking the ball. It helps uh, uh, also with your, your, as I just said, keeping your body in sync to prevent your left side from opening up too early. So it's easier to control the racket and the ball if you have that left arm out. So if you want to improve your forehand, I would certainly start with that left arm or non-dominant arm position. Remember, we want to have that non-dominant arm close to straight and parallel to the baseline at the end of your preparation, and that's going to be by the time the ball bounces on your side of the net. So work on that first because most of you, almost all of you, are not doing anything with the left arm or probably, I should say, not doing enough stretch of that left arm. It's probably more like this, which doesn't do much good. So remember, to practice getting that left arm close to straight, you can first start with some drop feeds to yourself. You can do a little short court. You can hit into a wall, hit into a curtain, and use a ball machine. Once again, you can hit against the wall, uh, and you can work your way back closer and closer to the baseline if you're rallying with a friend. Once again, every individual shot focus on that left arm or non-dominant arm stretch. We want that arm close to straight and parallel to the baseline. Again, this is Jeremy Malfay with Fundamental Tennis. If you enjoy this video, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel, and click that notification bell so that you can see next week's video.